to you from deep down in the wilderness. Okay, I'm not deep down in the wilderness. I'm actually over here in the uh, McDonald's parking lot. Yeah, y'all see cinnamon? And um, today I'm going to make a little quick video about the tools that I typically carry on me on the bike. And some of the tools that I keep at home as well. I'm going to try to keep it brief, but just for information sharing and ideas. And I uh, definitely encourage you to subscribe. And I encourage you to, you know, comment down at the bottom and tell me what kind of tools um, you carry on your bike. Um, you know, for example, typically, you know, I had a top case on there. Cinnamon's running with the flat top today. Um, but I'm not going far. I just came to grab a bite to eat and run into 7-Eleven real quick. But um, here's um, the tools that I'm working with. All right. So let's see here. Um, I'll edit out all these technical difficulties. But um, so this is the tool bag that I keep under the seat in the, um, on the bike. And I have a photo of all the tools that are basically laid out in the open. But basically, everything kind of fits up in here like so. And, you know, I've got some wrenches, some spanners. And um, another spanner that I use to make some adjustments on the preload on the on the rear suspension, another hexagonal thingamajig, I've got one that's male, one that's female, uh, thingamajigs, thingamajigs, whatchamacallits, leverage, always check your tire pressure. You don't have to ride around with your tires at max pressure, but you also don't have to ride around with your tires at 12 PSI. Moderation, people. Moderation. It's like alcohol, which you don't drink while you're riding. But, you know, air your tires up in moderation, folks. Find a happy medium. Um, and some more spanners and some more, you know, wrenches in here. Various different sizes. What is this? 14 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Um, 12 millimeter, 11 millimeter, another 10, another 14, another 12. Here's something to note. I have the longer ones and the shorter ones because these are good for getting in some of, them, some of those tight spots. And sometimes you just need two 12s in order to do some things. So, um, some of these are duplicated in terms of the numbers. I know I got two 12s and two 10s in here. I'm, I, I believe I have two 14s as well. So this is the tools that I carry on the bike. And um, this comes very handy. Um, it's not often that I... I also got some Loctite that I keep on the bike. It's not often that I don't, um, you know, have something that I need in a clutch in this pouch. I also keep my um, AMA, AMA, I don't know if y'all can see this, my AMA card on me at all times and my bike registration, of course, you know what? This is the old registration, the expired. I need to go and swap this out and put the new one in here. Um, and um, I didn't know I was only down to one of these, but um, I need to go dig in the pack. These are the... Um, tire plugs and the actual um, plug tools they're under the seat as well they were up under this pouch I'll break those out I'll, I'll put a screenshot of those in the video let's see here so some of the things that I keep at home I keep um, my tire irons and I think you guys saw me using these um, in the most re one of our most recent videos, the changing the tire video. We didn't really show a lot of the struggling with the tire iron. I didn't show a lot of the struggle, but um, they come in handy and um, for changing your own tires. 
Also, for those of you that care about your little pretty shiny rims, we do have some um, rim guards. I use them. They help a little bit. I'm not at that paranoid about my rims so much. Um, it is good to keep the rims from scratching, scratching up just because the scratches can lead to rust. So if you really care about stuff like that, then you definitely want to try to protect the rims, try to protect the other metal on the bike. Uh, I don't really think of my bikes in terms of having to be pristine all the time. I'm a little rough with my stuff, so uh, I don't necessarily always make sure that the bike doesn't pick up scratches. It builds character. Um, now, the funny thing, I was digging through my tools today and I came across this little thing this thigamajig and this thigamajig actually helps you to um, press the rubber on the tire down into the well so that you can get the slack that you need to get the entire tire on the rim I completely forgot about these and it took us probably a good 20 minutes longer than it needed to because um, I didn't pull these out and use them to help leverage you know the activity of changing the tire um, this is a breaker bar and breaker bars are very useful tools to have um, very useful tools to have this is adjustable you can change the sizes um, what is this a half inch I don't know but um, definitely you know again this gives you leverage so when you have a uh, um, really tight um, bolt or um, something you need to take a bolt or something you need to take off you can use this for leverage something where you'd be sitting there straining and struggling for an hour with this it's just usually a just, you know a little pressure tight pop and the next thing you know maybe do it once or twice and you've loosened up the bolt but then you can just switch on over to your other tools and proceed from there Another thing that you're going to um, probably use, okay, so I've shown you that I've got this little pouch right here. This is really a pencil case, but um, repurposed. But a lot of people will carry a roll bag, and so they'll put their tools in the roll bag. And this is very handy. This is actually not a bad thing to carry at all. Um, you see here, it's got these little pouches and pockets, and the roll bag is actually a very good way to carry your tools. I particularly don't use the roll bag because I like to carry my tool bag up under the seat. But um, the thing is, there are times when I will switch the tools over, maybe for a trip or something, to the roll bag. It rolls up pretty tight and small. You can fit it in a lot of places and just tuck the roll bag into um, um, some of my um, my travel bags, whether that be the preferably not the top case usually a side bag um, one of the things with the tools they are heavy I don't know this might be pushing five pounds but um, you like you want to try to put the weight down low on the bike um, grease you need grease um, this is multi-purpose grease um, a lot of times when you're taking things off like axles and stuff like that um, you want to clean them to work with them or if they're new parts and then you want to definitely grease them when you put them on the grease actually helps to keep the dirt out and keeping the dirt out will keep the um, parts from um, being scratched up and um, just getting a lot of that um, friction damage and so the grease is really good for that another very important tool and you don't have to spend a lot on this is your handy dandy torque wrench. Now the torque wrench is adjustable. Gotta gotta have to play with it. There's some little you can't see this I'm sure, but there's some writing on here that helps you to know um, how many pounds of pressure or how many pounds of torque I should say are being applied. It comes with um, newton meters on one side and foot pounds on the other side. Um, that's the other thing I didn't mention. You notice when I was talking about my tools, I was mainly discussing my tools in, in millimeters. Um, your tools can come in uh, metric and or standard. You know, America's old-fashioned. We haven't, well, talk about this. This is the time and place. Um, um, 
America has not, Americans have not really moved to the metric system the way the rest, most of the rest of the world has. And it's really interesting for that to be the case because in reality, the country, especially the businesses, have moved to the metric system. So if you ever take the time to look at a soda bottle, for example, um, you know, soda, carbonated beverage, pop, it's going to read 20 it's going to it's going to say it's going to say 20 ounces but it's also going to have um some type of metric measurement on the bottle just like we buy two liters we don't buy half gallons of of um, coca-cola we buy two liter bottles we buy one liter bottles um i think it's really just the liquor and the milk that we just can't let go of some of those standard measurements um you, you know you get a pint of liquor you get a um a quart you know, buy your, but actually, if you look at the bottles, you will note that the bottles will measure out 500 milliliters, um, a liter, which is a thousand, um, um, a thousand milliliters. Um, basically, we have moved to the metric system, whether we, we own it or not. So depending on the type of bike you ride, you may have a bike that um, has standard measurements like Harley's. Um, that's pretty much the only one that's running that way. And most other bikes are going to run with metric measurements. So your Japanese and your European bikes are going to come um, in millimeter and other, other metric measurements. Um, usually they measure the weight in kilograms. I noticed a few countries are a little, you know, you know, bifurcated in terms of their terminology. They'll still, they still understand the standard terms. But all in all, the metric terms are more precise. The metric terms are more universally known. And um, it really, you should just make sure the tools that you have match up to your bike. And honestly, if you've got standard tools, um, you can find the right one to fit. And same thing, vice versa, for the milli, um, with the uh, millimeters. You can find something that fits in reverse. I got one more thing that I'm going to show you guys on this particular video. And then I think that will, think we will be able to wrap this one, um, this one up. Uh, i take that back. Two more things and then I'm Okay, so also we have a ratchet set. Now, of course, I don't carry this on the bike with me, but um, I do carry this. I keep this at home. It's got a lot more variety in terms of the sized um, tools. This particular brand is Stanley. Stanley seems to be pretty good. Um, I'm not particular to one brand, although they do. There is a such thing as name brand quality when it comes to your tools. So you might want to do a little background on that and do something you're comfortable with. Notice the measurements are on here. Over here we've got the metric, and then over here we've got the standard measures. Um, again, uh, metric on this side standard on this side same thing down here standard on the left metric on the right um, different size tools so all in all um, the ratchet set is very important um, you guys know um, I've got a video either out or coming very soon on a hanging service and repair manual um, and in here actually I'm not going to dive deep into this because like I said it has its own video but in the introduction if I can find it there actually is some information oh, I can't find it Okay, there's a chart in here. Oh, hold on. There's a spec chart in here. And as there's also a maintenance schedule in here. But as you're doing work on a particular job, it will actually give you the instructions about the particular tools you might need in order to do a certain job. So it's pretty detailed in terms of its instructions. 
um, even gives you levels of difficulty and I highly advise that if you own any kind of motor vehicle that you buy the Haynes manual to go along with that vehicle and the only other thing I want to show you here is um, I do have an air compressor this one is slime oh hold on air compressor this one is slime I usually keep some gloves on me on the bike I keep the compressor on the bike with me when I'm riding uh, let's see can I show you the connector I can actually connect it up um, to the battery and um, this is usually tucked away somewhere on the bike um, anytime I go out so if I do experience a flat tire I you know I have the air compressor to, and if even I'm, I'm low if I want to down you know take my tire pressures down for some off-road um, I can do that and when I get back and ready to go back on the road I can you know air it back up just really handy uh, I'll at some point I'll put the link down at the bottom it did not cost a lot I'll tell you that I also have oh I don't even know what brand this is what is it Python Venom Venom so I can use um, I have a front and a rear I think I just brought the front out just now because um, I used it when we changed the front tire about a week or so ago so I use that to jack up the bike I also do heavily recommend that you get a center stand um, a lot of my light maintenance like my chain cleaning I'm able to do on the center stand so that's always a good tool to have as well as a part but a good part to have on your bike that helps facilitate you know bike maintenance so those are my tool kits it's both my um, on bike tool kit and my back home tool kit my air compressor my manual and god forbid get some bug spray any good shade tree mechanic worth his salt is going to have some bug spray because i tell you they will eat you alive out here. They will eat you alive. And um, I was sitting here enjoying some MC Rider. But um, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of great videos online. There's a lot of great instruction. You can get your motorcycle manual, the mechanics manual, from, off, from online. So sometimes you can even find it for free. Um, there's plenty of information online. So between the tools I carry on the bike, the tools I have at the house, and... Um, the Haynes manual, the online manual, the YouTube videos, you know, it really turns my bike not just into a riding experience, but also a hands-on mechanics experience. And that's, you know, like I said, that's one of the true, you know, blessings of riding is that aspect of the experience, working on your bike, knowing your bike, understanding it, knowing the little quirks when you hear things, sometimes you're not sure. Um, the Facebook groups and the other um, groups that are out there um, online, um, the chat groups and, and, and things like that are really great. There's a lot of great blogs out there, a lot of great vlogs out there, a lot of people who ride the same bike as you. Use it, leverage it, enjoy it. Um, make the mechanical aspects of the bike be part of the fun and not just the challenge to riding. And with that, I'm just going to say um, rock it rolls Let's try over and out. Again. Google Assistant keeps cutting off my videos, so I'm frustrated, but basically, I'm joking, I'm not that frustrated, folks. Um, different sections of the book, section five, preparing a ride, and then, you know, it just feeds through um, basics for emergencies, basic streets. All right, we're going to make this video, I should have put the headset in, let's stop. Freaking ridiculous. I can't get the phone to record properly without Google Assistant interrupting all the damn time. If I have it turned off, I'm going to turn it back on. Google is going to proceed to be intrusive upon my entire life, and they're not going to make a single additional dollar from me because of it, which is the most irritating part. I already subscribed to a couple of different services. I, you know, I have an expanded drive. 
And it's just frustrating because Google makes you not want to deal with them at all when you're already a paying customer. It's just ridiculous.